I went s seven and three. It's my seventeen ninety. Hey everybody, I'm Captain EMT and welcome to Silver Old Fart, the series where I look at the game from a newbie's perspective. So this season, start of a new season, season seven, I went ahead and played my prelims on stream on Tuesday and I ended up going seven in three in prelims. We did play a couple games after that, but I came out at 1793 on my SR and this is actually a huge step up from where I ended season six at 1637 and that was very very comforting to me as literally every single season I have just had issues coming out of placements so my goal for this season is to actually get to gold so that at some point I can bring you a gold old fart you know the very first episode of this was a bronze old fart this second episode is a silver old fart. I want to bring you guys that gold old fart. All right, so BlizzCon recap. So we had the World Cup. I watched pretty much all of it. In fact, I went over to the Streaker's house, ended up watching the US versus South Korea match on Friday night. And I got to tell you, it was an amazing match. Probably the best match I've ever seen of Overwatch, actually. But I really came away from it just a little bit upset because I really feel like we could have won that match if we would have had better tank play. But that's one thing to think about too, is that you got to play South Korea and go for the 3-0. We had the opportunity to go for the 3-0. And the reason you go for the 3-0 on South Korea is the simple fact that they adapt better than anyone else in the entirety of Overwatch. So if you're going to beat them, it's going to be easier to beat them 3-0 than it's going to be in Game 7. But with our tanks, I mean, Cool Matt was kind of non-existent. Fact Fiction was serviceable for the majority of the match but he did make some very blundering mistakes such as on Eichenwald he had his ult there was one person from South Korea on the payload he could have pushed him off and we could have gotten that last like two meters that we needed to send it into another round at that point you know it took them a long time to attack the a point the actual capture point and we did it really fast so the ball was in our corner and then going on to hanamura where the us actually tied south korea it's one of those big things that if you have a winston and a diva how the heck is a Widowmaker getting any room? So Flower just started annihilating people with Widowmaker. We had Fact Fiction on Winston and Cool Matt on D.Va, yet he was just sitting there freely shooting. I understand people have said, oh, well, the rest of the South Korea team was protecting Flower very well, things like that. But the simple fact is, D.Va and Winston are both counters to Widowmaker and we couldn't even push her off the perch. And then when we get to the second point and Flower's still playing it, Fact Fiction finally decides to find, to go after Flower, but making a rookie mistake, jumping at a Widowmaker and not doing a butt jump as Winston. So he was getting double tapped in the head by Flower. So it was kind of one of those things that I told everybody at the Streaker's apartment is that it comes down to our tanks. With the changes, the recent changes, our healers probably, you know, have a better chance than their healers, even though they have Ru Hong, who's probably the best Ana in the world. But our DPS are about the same, and then their tanks are a little bit better than ours. So if our tanks had stepped up, I thought that we could win. And in the end, we ended up losing, but it's fine. So... One thing from the finals with Canada is I really enjoyed after the way Flower was disrespecting Jake that Surefor teabagged the heck and taunted the heck out of Flower. It just kind of seemed like, you know, just deserves. On the other hand, it's still unsportsmanlike to do that. And I've noticed this from a lot of the top players, a lot of the 
pro players going into Overwatch League is that a lot of them aren't very respectful, very unsportsmanlike. It, it's kind of upsetting in a way, but I guess that's what you get with a lot of young competitors that, you know, they're seeing the limelight. They're they're getting on this stage where they're seeing a lot of, you know, camera time getting really popular. And they just can't handle it the way, say, a pro NFL player would or a pro, pro NBA player would. Somebody who's, you know, been there a while, gone through the college scene, gotten to the pros and been in the pros a little while. But I, I guess that'll come with time. And with Overwatch League now being a thing, it's going to allow players to actually get older and continue their careers later. So we might see maturity come out of players and that might reshape the face of esports where, you know, it's less teabagging and more shaking of hands and saying good job. So as far as the World Cup goes next year, I really hope they kind of enforce a no overwatch league players no full-on pro players in the world cup because that would actually make it a lot more interesting uh as far as the spectator ui goes they added the colors in that was the first time was you know at blizzcon that they used it and it made it so much easier to watch so much easier for people to understand what was going on i mean i could see it but the other people around me could then actually key in and know hey that's us or hey that's canada or hey that's south korea or hey that's france and they understood you know where the players were and the jersey system actually helped out a ton with it so the last part of BlizzCon I want to jump into is probably Moira, the new character. So really cool, kind of, you know, similar to Zen, kind of damage, healing, combo, hybrid. But everybody's talking about she's going to be OP, this and that. And kind of the thing that I kind of had to go back on and think about is with Mercy in her current state, she is going to be the main healer. With the res, the res is so powerful. If you don't bring her, it's basically a 6v7 you're walking into. So until she is changed and res is changed somehow where she is not a must pick, Moira is going to have to fight for that off healer position with Zin and Lucio. And I really think that in the areas that you would want to use zen or lucio they really kind of trump moira in those positions i guess we'll have to see how the pros use her but i mean zenyatta has that range damage with no fall off he's got the discord orb which in, in an organized team is super powerful and then on king of the hill maps i mean lucio is just he's amazing I, there's no other way to put it. He's still amazing. So, I mean, it, I, it's going to be hard for her to get in that mix, I think, just because of the simple fact that she doesn't bring that utility to the off healer spot and she's not going to trump out Mercy in that main healer spot. Uh, I also forgot the Reinhardt short. I loved it! Reinhardt was one of the first characters I latched onto when I first started playing the game in beta. And I gotta tell you, just seeing him sliding around with movement that is unheard of in actually playing the game, it was it, it was a great video to watch. And they're bringing the tearjerker again. Baldrick is amazing and he gave his life up not as tearjerker as snowball with may but i mean right in the heart to a to a big guy like me i'm six four i i can feel it yeah it, it was a it was a great short and i actually really loved it on to the next point that i want to kind of get to is character classes and kind of Characters aren't classed properly. And I know a lot of people have talked about this in the past, but the first one I want to jump on is Symmetra. Symmetra is not a support. Maybe back before she got a rework where she was actually giving people shields, that was one of her abilities was to give people shields, she was more of a support then. But I know this has been a topic that a lot of people have you know, talked about. Oh, well, she, you know, she has the shield generator and her turrets slow people down and this and that. So how is Symmetra any different than Orisa at that point? The halt slows people down. The turrets slow people down. 
they both have a shield. Their ults are supportive ults, basically. They give stuff to other players on their team. So if you're going to call Symmetra a support, then Orissa is a support as well. She's a tank support. She's a tank support hybrid, and Symmetra's a DPS support hybrid. To me, Symmetra is a DPS. She needs to be moved into the defense category. And Orissa is obviously a tank, should stay in that tank category. Moving on, Torb is a support. Absolutely a support. Just because of his freaking armor packs. So... You gotta think about it this way. That armor pack is basically the same amount that a small health pack is gonna give you. And that's huge, but it's actually better than a small health pack because A, you don't have to run and get it. Torb can just give it to you. And B, that's health on top of your normal health. So a, a small health pack is only gonna take you to your maximum health. That armor pack? that is going to put you above your maximum health. So instead of being, say, a 200 health squishy, you're now a 275 health, almost a tank. Heck, throw a Symmetra Shield Generator on there, and all of a sudden you're 350 health. Basically, every character on your team is a tank. So, I definitely Torb is a support with those armor packs. His turret is a great thing just to kind of distract people. He, he's a support DPS hybrid. So moving on to D.Va. D.Va is close to my heart. I even played her back when her DM was on cooldown instead of an actual meter. But uh, with the recent changes to D.Va, that hitbox, that crit box, is still so huge. It's one of the things that before they originally reworked her and made DM on kind of a toggle basis, I wanted them to, you know, make that crit box smaller. And... We're back at that point again with her having two seconds of DM. She just gets knocked out of her mech way too often. And she can't really face tank anymore like she used to. So it's one of those things that to me she's basically kind of an assassin like Reaper or tank buster like Reaper. I don't really consider her a tank anymore just because she gets popped out of her mech so easily and at that point she's almost useless. I mean that pistol is amazing but she's almost useless and this kind of goes back to the World Cup so watching the World Cup at BlizzCon most of the D.Va play out there wasn't really tanking it was you know you took a couple shots to the face and maybe you blocked a couple of things but then you were out of your mech and you're having to run around shooting with your pistol and yeah diva just did not work out in the world cup like cool matt from the u.s played it the entire time of that match and he was completely non-existent the majority of the time. It was almost like there, it was just a single tank situation. So I could really kind of see D.Va making her way out of the meta as a tank. Maybe as like an off kind of flanker pick. Because she can still flank pretty good, especially with those new rockets. Alright, so on to the last kind of segment of this episode of Old Fart. Uh, the streaker I mentioned I was over at his place for BlizzCon he was telling me that he wants to try to get a team together all local guys so at least once every other week or once every week we can actually get together and play and one of the things that he mentioned to me is that nobody is going to get on board with it unless I'm on board with it so essentially we're looking to put together a group of all of our friends or local players so definitely look out for that for that i'd kind of be playing off heel flex so you'd probably see me play a lot of zenyatta which you'll notice when you see the rank videos over on compton emt's gameplay i am going to be playing a lot of zenyatta just in general so that'll kind of be my my area of expertise obviously vendetta will be the main tank um, streaker wants to be the off DPS flex you know things like that so look out for that we're going to be kind of putting things together we're probably going to practice three times a week for a couple hours I mean we're all kind of older guys we have nine to five jobs some of us have kids you know it's 
it, it is what it is and we're going to try and get as good as we can as a team so with that my tuesday stream is always going to be a practice it's always going to be overwatch i know that vendetta has tuesdays off 99 percent of the weeks that he works and that is going to be our main kind of practice day where you guys can watch us so that is my plan for for tuesdays and i'm i'll probably be playing on other days as well you know on non jackbox sundays sometimes on thursdays so i kind of want thursdays to be my variety stream but you will see some overwatch on there as well all right guys well that's it that's your episode of silver old fart old fart episode number two so i am pretty much close to my goal as you know i did end my first night of season seven at mid 1800s so if i can get to that gold level here early in the season i might up my uh my goals and that'll come in a later episode but anyways guys if you like the video definitely click that like button if you didn't click the dislike button i don't know whatever you liked but yeah make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you get all of the uh future videos you get a notification for them anyways there is the last episode as well as another video for you and the subscribe button on screen as well as a subscribe to compton emt's gameplay have a good one peace